Hey, here at uh, Roadhouse Brewery in Jackson, Wyoming, with Sean and also with Max. We brewed a really cool lager with Pacific Sunrise. We'll get into some details around that, but before we talk about that, let's talk about Roadhouse first. You guys give us a little background on Roadhouse Brewery, how long we've been here, and what's going on here. Yeah, Roadhouse Brewing has been around since about 2012 or so. We started closer to Teton Village, uh, Ski Mountain in Jackson. We started a little seven barrel brew pub system. By 2017, we finally finished our production plant here that we're sitting in as our tap room here. Uh, we also have a restaurant on Town Square in Jackson. It's got a little five barrel pilot system where we first started playing with, with Pacific Sunrise and we do a lot of other fun experiments up there. And we distribute throughout the Intermountain West and we're really excited to be here and partner with Mill 95 and working with Pacific Sunrise. So we're, we're stoked. Max, give us a little of your background. Yeah, I'm the brewmaster here. So I oversee brewing at, at the production plant and, and up in the square as well. Been brewing for almost 10 years. Started at a brewery over in Idaho on the other side of Teton Pass and went to the Siebel program, furthered my education in brewing and joined the Roadhouse team in 2017. Sean, tell us a little bit about your background. Uh, yeah, I'm the lead brewer here um, at Roadhouse. Um, I've been brewing here for two and a half years, so relatively new, or at least it still feels that way, but I also, at the same point, feel like I've been here for a really long time. <laughs> um, don't plan on leaving. We were really excited when you approached us to make the test batches of it, do some trials, ale and lager. We loved them both, but we went with the lager again um, on the big scale. I'm yeah. really excited about This Pacific Sunrise beer turned out to be what, one of the hottest beers around. Tell us a little bit about that. <clears throat> the way we designed our pilot system is, is it's a 10 barrel system with 5 barrel fermenters. We brewed a 10 barrel batch of it, start, split it into two different wort streams so we could do one with an ale, small with our house lageries, <clears throat> and they were able to dry hop them pretty similarly as well. We put both those on tap and, and were two of the fastest moving beers we've ever had yeah. up there. Super clean, really amazing flavor, really unique flavor to them as well coming from that Paxan. It was very easy no-brainer to then take it into a, a larger batch and so what we did here we yeah. did a nice big 40 barrel batch of it and we draft only so we're really excited to get that sucker carved and drinking that for the rest of the summer I mean, let's talk about the beer it's a lager i'll let you guys get into it whether we brewed with pacific sunrise as we talk about beer we'll start with the hop it's a really cool dual purpose hop pretty high in alpha it's up there about 14 15 <laughs> percent so it's usually the kind of hop you would use just for bittering so cool that it comes off with a great citrus tangerine flavors that you can extract and you guys are doing a great job getting that tangerine flavor out of it tell us a little bit more about the other components of beer malt bill yeast a little bit and we'll talk about process after that so malt bill primarily idaho grown two which will we get only two hours from here i, I love our base malt we also have added some vitamin vienna as well as vitamin hill wheat and just a little bit of carafum vitamin as well uh, just for head retention but the cool thing i mean it's a little bit more in the process but it kind of counts towards the malt as we did a, a single decoction on and the wheat give it a little mouthfeel big time the wheat is something we've been playing with in some of our lagers as well for a little extra mouthfeel sometimes i get a little bit more of like a little tangy kind of acidic component from the wheat into their beers as well i certainly pair in well with that tangerine that comes from the pack on, which is really awesome. Pretty cool hopping bill on this beer as well, the way we hopped it. We did a first word hop edition on this, so we kind of forewent that traditional 60 minute bittering. We wanted to make sure that we use Paxan throughout the entire brewery process, both in the bittering aspect, major aroma, really honing in on that dual purpose side of this hop. That first word hop, which I still think has a lot of research and studies to be done on what first word hopping does, but we find it really accentuates that smooth, really crisp bitterness to the beer, rounds it out. So about 10 barrels through and our, our louder, or the 30 barrel louder, we, we, we throw that first word hop in. We hit it with a little bit of 30 minute addition as well, just to try and provide some of that aroma and get a lot of that really nice, well-rounded aspect of the hop. And then a, a nice big charge in the Whirlpool. And then of course, really big dry hop. So we've used this hop and only packs on for this beer. It's a single hop beer and it's gonna showcase it from what it can do from bittering to just nice aroma addition and then all the way down to yeah. that dry hop in the pool. Yeah, I love the way you, you guys dry hop. So we're gonna have to talk about that a little bit. We just uh, actually dry hop this beer. We're gonna try the beer pre-dry hop and post-dry hop for everybody. We'll do some sensory work on it. Tell us, Sean, a little bit about the dry hopping process. Yes, yeah, so this brew was designed by Browcon with a Browcon hop gun. Basically a giant torpedo or rocket looking uh, <laughs> thing you call. It's ready to fly, right? Exactly, that uh, we call <laughs> Sir Elton John. <laughs> basically just vertical whirlpool with a center we call it uh, candle there's a bunch of tiny little perforations in it so we whirlpool the hops we fill it with beer throw the hops in whirlpool those hops around and those hops will not be able to go through that candle until they've broken down enough um, so the extraction that we get out of our hop pellets because of that I uh, think is really accentuated from a, a more traditional dry hop 
I, I think that it's going to make all the difference. I'm actually really excited to do it on a logger because typically we're doing it on ale strains and almost anything Browcon is designed really well for, for logger yeast or just loggers in general. I'm excited because I, I think that it's going to break up those hops probably better than any other beer we've done just purely yeah. because we don't have as much of that yeast floating around in the beer. Well, we're yep. recirculating right from fermentation tank to the hop gun back to the fermentation tank and uh, really, you know, obviously uh, getting that real contact with the hop in that yeah. process. But uh, you were talking, Max, uh, possibly going from uh, knockout to there at some point in time. Our process piping around our Whirlpool and our heat exchanger has some bypass valves that we could actually run hot work through the hop, the hop gun and, and essentially treat it like a giant hop pack. Yeah. And, uh, uh, That's something that we'll have to go off and talk about someday, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, since we started talking about Pacific Sunrise, um, it seems like it, you guys have had some great success with Different beers have sold out like crazy. What, what are you guys getting out of the Pack Sunrise that you, uh, that you really like? Yeah, I like, um, I think one, I really enjoy it as a true single hop. I think it's a great hop that we can play in just a, a single hop beer. Um, it still gives like an amazing punch, a great flavor, great aroma, and of course that really beautiful smooth bitterness. We've also played with it with some of its maybe bigger cousins, uh, paired with some of the, the bigger players from New Zealand, um, and it plays really well in the sandbox with those. It just really brings out a lot of that citrus and it just complements pretty much anything that we've, we've brewed with, um, all the way from Kolsch that Sean brewed to traditional hazy pale ale IPA, the single hop lager. You can put it just about anything with anything, yeah. and it just brings it out, I think, in a much bigger, bolder way. But the one other thing I have to add to that, I think that's something that we all found really, really neat in our initial sensory. That it didn't have the same profile as a, a traditional single hop beer. Yeah. Because um, it just didn't have that, you know, typically you do a single hop, with a couple exceptions, you'll usually get, you know, one or two really big aroma, really big flavors, and you can tell it's like, all right, it's somewhat one dimensional. On this one, at least for me, you know, you said tangerine, I think we were getting a lot of like, a lot of just bright uh, citrus um, or even you know bright tropical fruits in there. It was really hard to pin down exactly what it was. Yeah. So it was for us confusing. And I, I remember handing this beer to Colby, uh, one of our co-founders, and he was like, this is really, he didn't believe this it was a single hop beer. So he was really excited about it. Yeah. Um, that was definitely something that we really, really enjoyed about the single hop variety of this. What I love about it is the cleanness of the aroma and the flavor, uh, which really you give note of that herbal. No. Uh, uh, flavor notes and that kind of stuff. It's just really some clean, clean aromas and flavors coming through with it. And the bitterness is so smooth. All right, well, hey, we've talked uh, We've talked about ourselves. We've talked about the beer. We've talked about the brewery. Now it's time to uh, have the rubber meet the road and uh, we're gonna uh, try the beer. We've got two versions of the beer here. The first one is uh, prior to dry hopping. So this has got so three editions of Paxson in, in it on the hot side. Uh, then this is, we've been, what, 45 minutes in dry hop right now, about yeah. close to an hour. And you can see the difference in the color and the, or the, the clarity on these. Uh, all said and done, OG Kush is the name of this. This should be a clear beer, I think, when it's all said and done. Oh, yeah. right? It should be bright and clean and uh, clarity perfect. But, uh, of course, we still got a lot of dry hop matter in here. But let's... Let's give this a shot. Let's try, uh, let's try the pre-hop or pre-dry hop version. Getting a good clean lager smell. Don't really get like a big bitterness smell off that aroma. Really clean, like you said. What are you guys seeing? Uh, yeah, aroma really clean. Definitely some bitterness, um, a crisp bitterness. Yeah. Like first word nice bitterness on this right now. Yeah. No aftertaste, no after bitterness. No. It, but really just kind of nice, perfect bitterness. For a lager, obviously a little heavier on the on the bitterness, but I think that's what we're going for, right? It's yeah. a yeah. unique and different kind of lager. So we had our lab manager run this through our benchtop fuge, just how we got it nice and clear to, to kind of start there. I mean, frankly, as is, it's already a really fantastic beer. <laughs> it's really a good, clean beer. Yeah. Really nice lager, honestly. It's got that amazing kind of a little bit of like that sulfur you get off a little bit of lager right now. We yeah. haven't obviously hit the lager phase, but I mean, it's yeah. it's got some of that beautiful aroma. It's clean. Yeah, I could just I could drink that. Say, oh, it's ter I, I, like, it's I terrifyingly that. drinkable. Yeah. yeah, it's really good. <laughs> yeah, aftertaste like outside of your tongue, a little bit of like you know acidity, fruit. Um, 
but nothing crazy. I think it's pretty dry hop. I'm really very looking forward. pleasurable as like a, oh, yeah. a lager. But I, th I think the dry hop one might change that. Yeah, let's give that. Let's that's give that a try. Yeah, get big citrus smell right out of the gate, right? It really reminds me of uh, like peeling a cutie, like yeah. a little clementine, you know? Like it's got that beautiful citrusy mist about it. Yeah. Now, <laughs> I'm trying to dodge the, at the hops in it. Oh. It's getting wrecked by bitterness. Bitterness, even though we've added, geez, another 22 pounds of uh, Pacific Sunrise on that. And even, I guess that came out to be about half pound per barrel in that dry hop. And even, I mean, even just a, that modest half pound, it's it's really changed the beer. The aroma is drastically, drastically different. And you really get the upfront citrus, uh, orange, tangerine, right out of the gate. Yeah, when that's cleaned up, if it still has that uh, same flavor and aroma, what a great lager. Yeah. No wonder it's number one on the seller's list. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Well, cheers, guys. Cheers. Thanks for everything. Absolutely. Thank you.